Welcome to Sunrise Sisters. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kate. And we're two runners who became friends quickly. We share advice, we laugh, and we're taking our runs off the road and into the studio. Are we going? All right, we're going. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Shannon. Did you run today? I did not run today. I opted to do a walk. Mm. I felt like I needed a day off. And, you know, it. what was interesting is I did get up early enough. I can't sleep past 5 a.m. because mm. I'm so used to getting up. Mm-hmm. But I kind of felt in my body, it's time to rest. I mm-hmm. didn't even throw it out to my weekend running partners, which are not you, which is another group that I try to meet up with. And no one seemed to speak up either because they were busy or felt the same. But interestingly enough, we were just talking about summer running and running alternatives because last weekend I did run with that group. Mm. We ran a little bit later than normal, which was 7 a.m., still early. And we decided to go over to the West Boylston Rail Trail. And it was a fantastic run, especially in the summer. So did I tell you about the time I was looking out my window and I saw this woman walking down the street and she stopped in front of my house and she bends over and I'm like, what is that lady doing? And she's ripping off a branch from the bush. Uh Then I'm thinking, what is she doing? And then she starts swinging it around at the bugs. I thought that was brilliant. It made me come up with a brilliant business idea, which I'll share with you. But I'm, it makes me think that that might be something you might need on a rail trail run is something to chew away the bugs. Okay, side topic. I believe we've mentioned this before, but I douse myself in bug spray, <laughs> chemical deep bug spray, which I'm currently looking for alternatives and using natural bug sprays because it's too much. But I consistently douse myself in bug spray, which is 80% effective. There's still a swarm of bugs. And near Kate's house, it's like Bug Grand Central Station. (laughs) Kate, on the other hand, (laughs) does not. And we mentioned this before because you've had the experience of the deer, the horse fly, deer fly, just targeting you. And What's a deer fly? There's such a thing as a deer fly? Wait, what? Yes. There's like a deer fly, which has like two little wings. It's not as big as the giant horse fly and it bites you just as bad. I don't know about a deer fly. Anyway, we get the same amount of bites. Do you realize this? Like you have a swarm. Don't believe it. Believe it. No. So now to go over to the rail trail. All right. Actually, no different than I feel are running. Here's what I love about rail trails. Hmm. They're shaded. At least this one is shaded for 95%. Mm-hmm. There's one portion where you come out of the trail, you're actually going under the highway. So the trees are cleared because of the structure, but it is absolutely shaded. So it's wonderful for warm weather. Feels cooler in there. It's near, this one particularly is near a river because it was the former site of a mill, because they use the river for power and for tra- and the rail for transport, which is really cool. So there's a historic element also that's nice there. But is, that, is the part of the building still there? Is it? Yep. There's part so of- Lots of places for people to hide in there and jump out at you. Uh, I see where you're going with this. There's no building structure, but there are remnants of buildings and cranks or gears or whatever things make wheels and a mill turn. Mm-hmm. But yes, I guess that's true. Actually, throughout the wooded area, anybody could jump out. I find the opposite, which is people are always on the trail. So you feel safe because there's somebody coming. Hmm. And what I also love too, so it's shaded. It gets the extra uh, coolness of the river has a nice cooling effect and it's dirt, but it's packed. It's a maintained, well-maintained trail by the Wachusa Greenways. There's volunteers that do great jobs coming in and clearing it. So you have a softer impact Mm. and you can go right in the middle. You have to listen for bikes. You have to see, you know, the front half is got dogs, but it is such a nice place. You can totally um, highway hypnosis it. 
you get going, you're talking. We ran last weekend, five very gentle miles, five and a half. And it was wonderful. We did an outback. You can actually go up to 10 miles on the trail because it extends and they continue to extend it. So I actually find that's a great summer running alternative. I tend to do it in the summer because the spring sometimes it's muddy and obviously the winter you're not running there because it's snow cover, but it's beautiful in the fall. Hmm. Um, if you get late spring, it's good too. And I've gone there and seen lady slippers and some great, you know, wildlife. I once saw a snake though, hmm. that I didn't know snakes moved really fast until I scared the snake and it went so fast down in the river. I was dumbfounded that it moved that fast. Do you like rail trail running and, or do you have good summer trail or running group mm-hmm. alternatives that you take? I would be too nervous to do that by myself. So I don't think I would do that, which stinks because it does sound really good. On the weekend when we aren't running and I run, I will put on music and it's just like a different type of run. Yes. Love our runs. I love that run. I am very careful like to think about where I'm running because I run by myself. Saturdays tend to be busier. So I feel like I can go out earlier and not be worried about it. Sundays are quieter earlier. So I'm a little more on alert. That makes sense. I did have a business idea. Um, thanks yeah. to this woman that what if you did like a hat, you know, and you and you glued or like maybe fastened a large branch to the back of the hat that stuck straight up in the air, maybe like, I don't know, a foot or two covered in leaves. Would that attract the bugs while you ran so they wouldn't be on your head? I'm going to go with no. Um, OK, but there is a thing going on with attaching a giant dragonfly, fake dragonfly to you because mosquitoes avoid dragonflies. And it was mentioned to me, I never heard of it. And then lo and behold, I went on a hike with my husband and there was a woman older, clearly hiked daily and hiked a lot and was a pro hiker. She had all the gear, she had the look and she had one attached. You are kidding. And Dave asked her, how does it work? And she said, so far, so good. So where do you put it? On the shoulder. Oh, and my God. To her backpack strap. What if I put it? multiple dragonflies on me, like one on each shoulder, maybe one on my back? I was thinking you could have, you know, those shower caps from the 1960s or 50s or 70s that had flowers, plastic yeah. flowers all over? Yeah. yeah. What if you did that, but it was just all dragonflies? Oh, my gosh. That's brilliant. You are so smart. Thank you. <laughs> your head would be a sauna you would literally be on fire though if you were running in the summer with a shower cap on that would be the worst feeling in the world it is uh, so, so humid and gross out right now even when we run early in the morning running early in the morning avoids the high heat and it avoids the sun on you that makes such a huge difference having the sun like right on you imagine running in the humidity that we just ran in with a shower cap on That would be hilarious. No, I cannot. Um, (laughs) To that point, that is our biggest thing. Why we're Sunrise Sisters is not just because it fits into our schedules, but in the summer, this morning, for example, was 59 degrees. Ah, so nice. Yesterday, you and I ran and it was the first cool, non-humid morning. It was 60 and it was actually a little chilly to start. It was perfect running weather because it was Mm -hmm. low humidity. So we get the benefit of the coolest time of usually 5 a.m. is the coolest. It gets 5 and 6 a.m. Even in the winter, it's the coldest. So you have to Mm -hmm. deal with that in the winter. Yeah. But for certain, without any of the rays and the whole night goes over, it's the coolest time. So we get the benefit of that. Now, the bugs are still out. So we deal with that. And it's been humid. And I've struggled, Kate, as you know, finishing the run without walking because the humidity has been so high. I've had that that mind block anyway. I'm, I get ready to walk on the way back. So I'm trying to overcome it and figure out ways to get rid of that. And when it's that humid, you just cannot. Hmm. So one of the things I think is there should also be cooling running gear that we should invent. You know, I have cool pajamas. They're kind of poly, which is what we wear when we're running. But I wonder if we create a gel layer that's thin or adhered, and then you put it in the freezer or the fridge, yeah. and then you wear that before you run. And same with a hat. 
I now I'm sure somebody's going to say you could just put them in water, put them in the fridge and then put them on wet, but that's disgusting. I'm thinking it's not wet. Right. I'm thinking it's kind of got a cooling layer and then you put it on yeah. cold so that you don't raise your temperature. There's the million dollar idea. Yeah. I already it's have right. it. <laughs> why, do we, why did people come up with our own ideas? So it's just like chest and, and back plate. So it keeps your heart area cool. So you stay cool. That's all right. How about this invention? <laughs> what I thought of was a hat with like uh, an umbrella on the top, like a hat. I know I'm going back to the hat. You got like something in the middle yes. that comes straight up. It's got a, a nice wide brim umbrella to protect you from the sun completely. However, on the inside of the umbrella, you've got like fans, maybe a cooling mist constantly coming down at your head as well. You know, lightweight, perhaps you could use it at dusk and put some lights on the top. So it had like some flashing lights so people could see you. Blinkers, you could put blinkers on either side. So directional. So if you were taking a right or a left, you just click this button, click that button. You could take a right, take a left. Everyone knows where you're going. They do have umbrella hats already. <laughs> do they have, do they mist and fan? No, I bet they no, don't. They See, don't do that. Makes no sense. So I'm just going to point out that my ideas <laughs> actually could be million dollar ideas and that other people have invented my ideas because they're so good. Your ideas are terrible. <laughs> they couldn't exist or they exist. You know but without your zany additions. Next time you go to take a left and you don't have your directional on and almost get hit by a car, you'll think <laughs> twice about that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I I will say one thing to watch out for, all, all kidding aside, but yeah, kidding aside, is sun blindness in the summer. Have you noticed? I walked the dog the other day and I thought I was going to get killed. Cars <laughs> were coming up right next to me because they were all blind. They and I realized be. sun blindness is no joke. Yeah. I'm telling you, I had it. So I now have to kind of go around another way to avoid the area of sun blindness. Cause I it was car after car and I'm like, what's wrong with these people? And I was like, Oh, they can't, they can't see you. See, that's the thing too. And at dusk, if you run at dusk, which is like another beautiful time to run that used to be my my favorite time to run growing up was dusk and like in the evening when the sun like maybe right now it gets dark around like let's say nine so i'd go out at eight and that was just a perfect time but people can't see you so no. you're running in the road and you can see just fine but drivers can't see you and that is tricky you have you do have to have I mean, I hate to go back to the hat idea again, but again, another use for the umbrella hat with the lights again. What if they were, okay, I'll join your zany idea. What if they were like those airplane wands that look like kind of mini <laughs> lightsabers? And when you're running, you just kind of, instead of doing this, where you pump your arms, you go to the side. So you're telling people move over, move over. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, you know what? What if you did, you know, on the highways where they have those flashing arrows that tell you to move over to the lane because the upcoming lane is closed? You could have that in the back with the arrow pointing to the side, like go around me, go around oh, me. Oh, I, I actually think that could work. It could be like one of the, like the, the back plate that Victoria was saying that's iced, which was my fantastic idea. Just somebody beat me to it. <laughs> You could have it where it blinks and tells you, or like it goes, like it fills in those dots, you know, where it goes doo, 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 <laughs> and tells people move over. I like move that over. idea. Yeah. I mean, we just came up that. I can't believe you don't think that's successful. You're, you know what? You don't get a piece of that. I don't care. <laughs> you don't get a piece out. Sunrise Sisters would like to thank Sterling Lancaster Community Television, all of our friends on social media, our listeners. I'd like to thank Brooke Winsman for our fantastic logo. Thanks for listening. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kate. And thanks for running with us.